Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to a, another episode of Cloud Education. Uh, Mike Erbs here, as usual. Uh, with the uh, nice winter beard growed out, growing out and uh, ready to roll. And uh, back from his short little hiatus uh, to get his beard game up and running, uh, Daryl is back with us. So glad to have you back here, D-Dub. Um, so today um, we're going to switch back to a little bit more of a conversation that is near and dear for Daryl and I with um, you know, some of the latest and greatest around the Microsoft ecosystem, uh, a little bit of the changes and, and such, especially with uh, Skype for Business Server 2019 being GA now. Um, so we want to kind of run through some of those details, share a little, in, little bit of insight as to you know, what we've learned over the past weeks uh, around the new, new release, as well as, you know, just a little bit of history about, you know, where this all came from and where things are heading with uh, within the Microsoft ecosystem. Um, so really uh, should be an interesting uh, little conversation. Um, so Daryl, I know this is something that, uh, you know, we've both been in the ecosystem talking about for quite some time and, you know, something that uh, you certainly have had a long history with as well. You want to kind of give us just a little bit of insight as to where things started in the Microsoft world, and then we can kind of help to uh, to bring that to the modern day and you know what we can do uh, today. Yep. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, I have been here for a while. Thanks for not calling me old, although I know that's what you, you wanted to say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, um, you know, it, it's been an interesting couple months, I think, as we've been kind of driving the GA of uh, Skype for Business Server 2019. It, it's kind of refreshed some of those conversations that we have every time there's a new cycle. Uh, let's jump back in the beginning. Microsoft's not new in this unified communications game, right? I mean, we're 20 years in um, or more now of Microsoft building products around things like net meeting, if you remember net meeting, right? Around bringing a webcam on your computer with Windows 95 for good or bad, right? Being able to have that type of communication, which was like Star Trek at the time, and now we just take for granted. Um, but Microsoft's been building their products around the business class, right? taking things like Active Directory and centralized authentication and centralized single login, a username and a password uh, to be able to control um, the company communication, right? Instant messaging, the red, yellow, green presence light. Um, they put out products like Live Communication Server, which even in an iteration of Live Communication Server, they added federation as, as, as a concept of having business to business communication. I can be here and you can be there. I'm authenticating through my Active Directory. You're authenticating to yours. But securely, we can communicate back and forth in real time. Again, it's things to take for granted today, but these were new things that Microsoft's been in the game for a while. LCS, LCS begat OCS, right? Office Communication Server and Live Meeting and bringing in meetings. But, but really where it all changed, if you remember, was 2010, right? Even just the introduction of Link Server. It's a new brand. It's a new name because Microsoft does change the brands from time to time. Um, but it really was a new, whole new game. Microsoft wanted the phone system. They don't just want instant messaging. They don't just want meetings. They want to displace Cisco and Avaya and Nortel. They, they want to be the Microsoft phone story. So with Link, it became Skype for Business 2015, now Skype for Business 2019. All about that is to say, not just because I'm old and have been around for a while, uh, Microsoft's not new. It's a very mature product, right? They're continuing to add um, the right types of feature sets that are going to be really important for your customer and your business, um, wherever your business is in their digital transformations lifecycle, right? Digital transformation is not just a buzzword. It's a real thing. If, you, if I would talk to any customer on that side of the webcam, um, I, I, I bet you have a digital transformation strategy of some sort, whether that's for end users, whether that's for that way you communicate, um, or just the way that you do business. And, and I think with Microsoft along the way and what they've done with UC, they have a lot of options today, right? A lot of options that can help you think through how to best communicate and collaborate internally. Um, and Mike, I, I know that you have been talking to some customers recently about how to help them make the right decision. How, how does that conversation go from your perspective? It, it's always interesting because, you know, just, just as much as we all know, everybody's um, organization is just a little bit different. You know, the, the, probably the core things tend to be the same, but, 
you know, those uh, particular use cases or ways people like to communicate and, and work are tend to be a little bit different based on the organization, whether it's like a manufacturer or maybe a, a more sales organization or retail or warehouse, you know, depending on those different departments as well. Um, but, you know, the great thing about what Microsoft has done is they're not only, you know, allowing you to deploy in the on-prem world, as you mentioned, LCS, OCS, Blink, and now Skype, Skype for Business Server, uh, but you also have the ability to leverage the cloud and the cloud services. And obviously that's a huge part, uh, if, you know, if, if not the, the primary, if you will, uh, goal of Microsoft right now is to, to, to you know, to, to utilize those cloud consumption. Um, but, you know, there's also options to have a mixture of both, right? Uh, with that hybrid type topology. At the end of the day, you know, you need to understand what your end users need and want. And, you know, having those multiple different options gives you that flexibility because, you know, Daryl, for, for what you and I do on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, using the cloud services from Microsoft, perfectly fine, right? We don't need any specific use cases. We're kind of those uh, roaming users that just, yep. you know, just need that connectivity, you know, that, that core uh, piece is to the puzzle, but there's other people in the organization that need specific things, whether it be, you know, that particular use case around boss admin or whatever it might be uh, that uh, that exists in the on-prem world. Um, so at the end of the day, you know, as an organization, you need to make those, those decisions. And really a couple of the highlights I wanted to call out um, is a couple of things. One is we mentioned, you know, on-prem, cloud and hybrid from a microsoft perspective they have licensing that will cover all those uh, different in, uh, scenarios for the users regardless of if they're on-prem or uh, online in the cloud so you have flexibility there but you know some of the other things to keep in mind um, moving from on-prem to the cloud isn't just you know a couple clicks and off you go Yes, the cloud is, is very simple, but there, there's a lot of things that you need to do and plan for and, and make sure you know, the network is prepared, the users are uh, aware of the changes, you know, that user adoption term that we use quite often. Uh, when you move from on-prem to online, there's different interfaces uh, between Skype for Business and Teams. So you need to make sure that your users are aware of how to utilize things. Uh, and then, you know, some of the other things, you know, more near and dear to our hearts is, uh, you know, the devices, the hardware, you know, being able to leverage a similar device in both of those environments is super important. And I know you'll touch on that a bit uh, later as well, Daryl. Uh, but, you know, voice trunking, we all know that uh, you can't get DIDs directly in calling plans from Microsoft everywhere in the world. Uh, and you might have contracts that are not yet, not yet expired with those service providers. So having, you know, the ability to leverage all these things and make those decisions is something uh, that's really going to help steer that conversation. It's not really, you know, I think you'd agree, Daryl, it's not really go do this. That's your only option. It's, hey, let, let's let's take a step back and look at all the different uh, lay of the land and, and, and make that right decision. Um, but what's neat is, as you mentioned earlier, the release of Sky for Business Server 2019 you know, brings in, you know, some new features and, and frankly removes some legacy features uh, that uh, have existed in Link in, in the past. Um, so maybe we can kind of touch a little bit on that, Daryl, as far as what's new and how that might help people uh, out there to uh, to adopt Skype Server 2019. Yeah, for sure. Um, you, you know, Skype for Business Server 2019, again, just the latest iteration, you know, I gave you a little history lesson you know, a few minutes ago. And, and, you know, Mike and I talk about this all the time. This is our job, right? Our, our job is to work with customers and really be that trusted advisor, um, wearing an audio code shirt, right? To walk through how, how audio codes help customers, but beyond the audio code story um, for the customers on that side of the webcam, finding, finding a good trusted advisor that has done this before and has done this many times will be so valuable for you because even though digital transformation is part of your strategy, um, you're only probably going to make some decisions a few times in your career, a few times in your company. Um, so finding someone who does this many times will help you avoid some pitfalls, but also come to the table prepared um, to talk to you about some of the new things that might be really, really important for your, customer, for your company. 
So for Skype for Business Server 2019, there are several new things. I'll, I'll just talk about a couple of them. I think that's just an essence of time. Um, we'll just kind of hit the highlights, right? Um, cloud voicemail, right? So even if on premises you're going to keep Skype for Business Server, you're probably already dabbling in the cloud at some level. Typically, customers start with the cloud with Exchange, right? Moving your mailbox to the cloud. That kind of seems to be that very first um, dabble, get your foot in the water, right? It, back in the day, the voicemail service in the cloud was part of Exchange, Exchange Unified Messaging. And now that's different. Now it's a different um, application in the Office 365 cloud network. It's called Cloud Voicemail. So on premises, if you if for whatever reason for governance or compliance or just business decision, you want to keep your voicemail all on premises, you can do that. You can still have Exchange Unified Messaging 2013 or 2016, not 2019. Right, it's not no longer part of Exchange 2019. You can still keep it on premises, but you now have the ability to move the voicemail service to the cloud voicemail service, CVS, um, inside Office 365 as compared to that legacy Exchange online. Right, so you still can access the voicemail in your Exchange mailbox. It's just not part of Exchange UM. It, it happens over here and it shoves it into your mailbox over there. It, it kind of all happens on the back end. It's transparent to you, you don't have to worry about it. But it's that latest iteration of what Microsoft's doing with voicemail, which is probably still important to you. It's still a portal for you to be able to log online through a web interface and manage your voicemail options. Um, it's really great. Um, one of the next things to talk about is probably that side-by-side -side migration. This is really important, right? Back in early iterations, if you wanted to move from OLC, LCS to OCS or OCS to Link, or even Link 2010 to Link 2013, you had to stand up a new environment and migrate to it and make the old environment go away. Well, in Skype for Business 2015, Microsoft started offering an in-place upgrade, where if you have a viable Link 2013 environment, you could just install Skype for Business 2019, 2015 on top of it. That's gone away. Microsoft has moved to a, a migration again, back to that side-by-side, -side, Skype 2015, Skype 2019, stand the new up, migrate over to it. I know that kind of caused a little consternation at the uh, Enterprise Connect and, and, and Ignite, people having questions about it, but ultimately it's cleaner, right? It, it really is cleaner. It, it is, right? I mean, you're, you're having new versions of Windows Server come into play. You know, you're wanting to get that, that old version of Windows Server 2012 out of the mix, you know, as that comes to end of support. Um, but, you know, also the hardware changes, right? Absolutely. You have, you have new requirements and, and frankly speaking, uh, a lot of hardware refreshes tend to happen after a five year cycle anyway. So what's, you know, what, what's a better time than now to, to make that change? So Yeah, absolutely. You know, the last thing I want to mention on the new front is the call data connector. You know, it's a, it's a fancy term, right? The, but the, 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 the main thing to understand about the call data connector in Skype for Business 2019 is it gives you the flexibility of how to handle your call monitoring. Um, and you're called data, the metrics that are important for you to know um, whether your voice infrastructure is, is healthy and happy. It, it allows you to take a subset of that data and shove it into the online tools like the call analytics dashboard, the call quality dashboard. So that quality of experience, the QOE data, the CDR, the detailed records, it, it sends it online so you have that common portal to go into um, to run health checks, to send off reports for compliance again for whatever reason. But again, remember, we're talking Skype for Business Server 2019, so you still have the ability to keep all that stuff on premises if that's important to you. Because I recognize that some businesses don't have the ability to move to online, whether it might be a, a local government or maybe just, again, for whatever compliance, maybe some PCI rule that's important to you that may not be important to another customer. So the side-by-side uh, -side migration, the cloud data connector, cloud voicemail, those are the big highlights of what's new in server 2019. There are some new like uh, tools to help make, the, make it a little bit better. You know, we have friends in the ecosystem that work for, um, for other partners and that are known in the ecosystem around Microsoft MVPs. They're always running new scripts. Mm -hmm. um, whenever anything gets announced, I'm sure um, our friend Pat Richard probably has a new how-to script built within oh, yeah. a of minutes, <laughs> right? Absolutely. And that's the brilliant part about, about this ecosystem around Microsoft UC, right? These guys have the ability to, to consume and that we've been here for a long time to help take the, um, the guesswork out of it and help you have a good way um, to consume the Microsoft UC strategy. But with the new stuff, there's also some old stuff, right? Some things went away and there's been some deprecation in the Skype um, 2019 environment. Mike, you wanna cover some of the highlights? 
Yeah, and, you know, it's interesting because sometimes when you hear that things are going away, you, you kind of take a step back and go, oh, oh, wow, you know, this, is, this isn't good. Uh, these are going to be things I need that I'm not going to be able to use anymore. But, you know, frankly speaking, there, there's, there's a lot of things that were added over the years between OCS, Link, and Skype Server um, that really didn't take off. And, you know, frankly, they're, they're just not necessarily needed, um, at least for the masses. Uh, so the first one... Uh, you had mentioned the in-place upgrade, the side-by-side -side migration, you know, that that came into play for that Skype server uh, 2015, no longer a thing. You know, you have to stand up those new server roles. Uh, as we mentioned before, not really a huge issue. Um, it tends to be a bit cleaner anyway to do it that way. Um, another thing uh, worth noting, something that, frankly speaking, I, I never even deployed in, in my days is the XMPP gateway. Um, you know, integration, federation with other third-party um, applications, not really a big thing, um, at least for, for us. I'm sure there are some people that have specific use cases out there that might, you know, uh, continue to want that and have to stay back on the previous version of Skype server for that, but uh, not really something that's been huge in the community. Uh, SQL mirroring, no longer a thing. Um, not necessarily a huge thing again you know there's other newer methods sql always on as an example is you know, sort of a new way of doing things so you know when you know things on the back end are in trying to be improved in the sql world uh you know leveraging that in skype server is is always uh, most important so having the latest and greatest so not really uh at least in our opinions uh, too big of a deal there um but the last one that I think is the one worth talking about the most is the uh, removal of persistent chat. Um, that that's an interesting one because we know that a couple of things. One, deploying persistent chat was <laughs> always interesting. Uh, interesting. It <laughs> yeah, it took a lot of computing power. It uh, you know was a different role within the Skype environment and Link environments in the past. Um, so it wasn't necessarily the prettiest thing, uh, but you know it, it met the requirement of, of those organizations that that needed that type of persistent chat. Uh, so with that going away, yes, that's 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 a big thing uh, for a lot of organizations. But that really ties into the future, uh, and and we talked much uh, a bit before about cloud with Microsoft Teams, and obviously Teams is the the buzzword, and you know the 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 definitely the direction of, of Microsoft um, from a cloud perspective, uh, but really that persistent chat role moving, uh, uh, being deprecated on-prem, now being able to do that similar type feature functionality in Teams, um, not necessarily the worst thing in the world. You know, there we talked about it in a previous episode from Ignite, all the things that Microsoft's been adding into Teams for compliance and management and things like that around Teams that become super powerful and I think it's it's going to be a real uh, replacement for persistent chat as we move forward, and uh, certainly not necessarily a big thing. But uh, but I don't know, Daryl, your thoughts. I mean, how how does it all kind of play together, and you know, look you know from a Microsoft landscape with with some of these changes, uh, you know, in Skype Server and, and ultimately in Teams as well. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I mean, honestly, it just all comes down to, to recognizing and understanding that from a Microsoft perspective, um, people communicate differently and it's changing, right? So people, the, the, the way that the people talk from picking up the phone in the olden days to whatever it might look like 10 years in the future, I have no concept, right? I'm not a futurist, yeah. right? But, but from a Microsoft perspective, they want to make sure the right tool is in place to help um, customers communicate in the right way and, and and ultimately right they're they're in business they want you to consume the microsoft tools right they want you to be sticky in the cloud they, they want you to utilize their their services um, to be important for you and they think that's the future and i would agree i think that's really important um I, I've, I've hitched my wagon to the microsoft pony it's my career and so i think it's really important as as uh, they've been building new tools um that, that we should um think through how to adopt that the right way for our customer and ultimately, what's great to know about that is that Audio Codes has a full portfolio to help you along the way, right? We, we try our best during these cloud education episodes to keep them very high level and keep them very industry specific, but I would be remiss 
to not remind you that Audio Codes has a full portfolio to help you on your journey, right? I'm not here to talk about all the individual pieces and parts, but there's a lot to think through, right? Whether you're on premises, whether you're hybrid, dipping your toes in the water of the cloud, or you're ready to go full bore, get me off my on premises environment, get me to the cloud right now. From a device standpoint, there's a phrase I like to use, right? Whether we're talking the last mile or the last three feet, we've got you covered, right? From that software defined voice networking at the SBC and the management layer, right? From devices that sit on desks or devices that sit in rooms on tabletops. And, and then a wide variety of services along the way to help you because we've done this. We've done this all over the world and we're really experienced um, with what it takes to get you, you from where you are to where you want to go in a Microsoft world, not just Microsoft, but in a Microsoft world specifically for this episode. Um, we've got, got what it takes to get you from here to there, including some really um, unique commercial offerings. Because I know that um, when it comes to a digital transformation um, strategy, uh, there's dollars involved, right? You've had to fight for your budget, right? And, it, and it's not a matter of just spending money and, and having unlimited funds that doesn't exist. You want to make sure you're spending the right money on the right things. So we've built some really good investment protection programs. So the, th the dollars that you spend for the devices or the services that are important today will last you into the future. Um, even if we don't know what the future looks like, Audio Codes has your back. We're going to protect that investment and best, uh, protect those dollars just to make sure you're spending your money and being good, wise stewards um, of your budget dollars. I think that's kind of where we wanted to kind of wrap that up today. You know, um, we, we've talked about Skype server. We talked about hybrid and cloud. Um, but ultimately, we just want to make sure that you, again, the customer on that side of the webcam, um, can feel confident that, that Microsoft does have a good strategy. And, and now you have to kind of apply uh, your brains and your, and, and your thought processes around what your business needs, what your end users need, how they communicate, how they collaborate, what it takes to make your business successful, to, to choose the right technology, and, and then finding a good trusted partner in the ecosystem. For example, us at Audio Codes, and we had that portfolio to help you along the way. So again, this is like one of our cloud education series. We try to just to talk, me and Mike kind of banter back and forth. We bring in some friends from time to time to talk about whatever the hot industry topic is that we think is important. Today was this, and um, we're gonna have a, a new episode here soon. Um, we'll find something new to talk about for you know 15 or 20 minutes. Um, hopefully have a good dialogue along the way that's helpful um, as you think through digital transformation, but as you think through what communication and collaboration looks like for you. Again, I'm Daryl. This is my friend, Mike. It's been good talking to you. We'll see you next time. Thanks, everybody.